thank you to be here. Welcome, and uh, immediately gives the, the, the pitch to, to uh, Petra, which will introduce herself. Oh, th thanks a lot for coming here. I'm an actuary by qualification, so I do a lot of insurance. I'm working uh, for the Swiss side of Think Tank, which I founded, and also in topics like GDPR. And I was thinking about putting the topic GDPR on this uh, stage here, and I thought, why not for my profession? Because actuaries I do work a lot with data, and they do work a lot with different type of data. So our work is a lot of limited right now, if we have to look at what we really need to do the portfolio. So that we calculate, we take the data, calculate out what the premium is. So in particular, if you think about insurance and you want to insure your bike, and they need a thousand people of or ten thousand people of insuring the bikes. They think how many bikes will be stolen, what's the value of each bike, and then they say, okay, this is now what the loss will be, and here's the premium plus a little bit admin cost, and that's the amount they will charge. For a bike, you don't need personal data. But if you go into other kind of parts in it, like life insurance, health insurance, we need data for that one. And that's where it makes it very difficult. So GDPR is actually for life, health, pensions, also property and cash. So it's um, a part where we go through all the t different type of processes, underwriting, these are those ones who accumulate the, the risks, uh, actuarial work, these are the ones who are doing the pricing. And when I was with before the act of GDPR came into place, we had our own computers, we took our portfolios, we traveled to the world, so we took the data all the way, the way out there. And that's an issue now. That's not becoming so easy right now. So the underwritings and the actuaries, they do need the personal data. If you look at the life insurance part, you need the birth, you need the age. You need the gender. And then you actually, under the new GDPR, you have to ask each one in the portfolio for consent. You have to ask them, can I take your data from my personal laptop? I'll delete it afterwards. But, and that's a problem. The portfolios normally run around 10,000, 20,000 people in a whole portfolio to be uh, accumulated and that makes things very difficult. And actuaries, um, they do need these type of data because we, without historical data, without data, you cannot do any kind of work. And we used to do those kind of work in India, so we outsourced, transferred it somewhere with an email attachment, and then they do, did the valuation, and this is a different mechanism now coming into place. Um, the questions on actuarial work, I know how, how many people are really familiar with the actuarial work. Um, it's actually a very easy one. You take any kind of claims data, you put that into a mechanism of matrices, Excel sheets or other type of matrices, calculate out what the risks will be, and put a price tag next to that. And you do the same thing for all kinds of lines of business. So if it's a property, if it's a cyber risk, which I'm doing, if it's an attack, uh, if it is a hurricane, or it is a simple life or health portfolio. It's all the type of the same thing. So <clears throat> the mechanism in between, um, when I started my career, we had to program it by heart, by ourselves. Nowadays, you take models somewhere, and there are companies offering those type of models, and then you calculate them through, and then you get the price tag. And that's what the insurance company is actually offering to all of you when you say, okay, where's my life insurance coming up? Well, okay, it costs a thousand a year, a month or a year. And you say, why is it so expensive? And then you say, well, you have an expensive type of classes. You have these and these and these type of risks, and so many other people do, and that's why it's more expensive because the insurers expect a higher claim, as easy as it is actually. 
uh, transfer the data is a very important part in it. Um, we saw yesterday the Bolo Museum, and actually I was working at IBM with a big uh, computer they were putting out there, and we were very proud of, this is IBM, we are putting the data out there. And this data is now in the phone, much smaller, so you could actually carry those kind of personal data with you everywhere can do it. Um, we used to work in India, that means I had a team of 15 actuaries over there in India. We sent them the data, we sent them the portfolios, and they calculated this out. And uh, in particular, in those outsourcing countries, you had different type of companies next to each other. They sort of like walls against each other. They couldn't even meet in the cafeterias for talking to each other. But now with the technology, it is a different, different story. And we uploaded the data, as I, as I said before. And it has an impact on the health insurance side. In particular, health insurance is one of the most critical areas in it. Because health, health companies are needing the data fast. So you go today to a doctor and you say, here's what I am, but I can't speak anymore. The doctor says, wait a second, can you sign up beforehand anything you would like us to do? And uh, in Germany, if you go to a doctor, you have to take a number because if they say, Mrs. Müller, please come in, everybody knows Mrs. Müller is sick. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a different different area. The whole GDPR actually, it's a show whether you all know it started in the health business in Germany, where they thought about it, bringing these Gesundheitskarte, these health cards in it. Nobody talks about the health cards in the world, but we have the law. <laughs> so we have to behave on this one. And um, the biggest case in, happened in a, a hospital in um, the US, where they wanted to act so fast after an event happened and a lot of people went into the hospital, they decrypted all the data. And of course, hackers took this these data out there and sold them on the black market. By the way, um, the price of uh, uh, personal health data sold on black markets is more than $300, while the price of a stolen credit card is only 10 And $10 for a stolen credit card, you go in, say to the bank, okay, here's my credit card stolen, they even give you the money back on this one, and it's out. You get a new credit card and the story is over. But for personal data, that is not gone. That remains. Um, Patient-centric is uh, an important part in it. Biometric data is something, let me just go through the stuff which I'm also doing on uh, cyber risks in it. And uh, cyber attacks on biometrical data is a topic which comes in when people put a hacking attack to a person with a, um, or to a group of people to attack them personally to do something against the society. So the biometrical data is a very um, personal data on risk in it and everybody who knows a little bit about cyber, the dark net is much more structured than we are on the white net. And also they are much more bigger. Um, big data, patient data. Patient data is using in different types. They are using in the financial parts. Reserving is, um, in the insurance term, the money you take aside for claims which might happen in the future. So you put some of the money aside. You say, okay, here's the 10 millions, what you get out of the premium. And then out of the pre 10 million, you put 8 million out of liquidity, you can invest it, and if a claim happens, then you have to take it out. The higher the claim is, the more you can invest. So for instance, a reinsurer, um, just under parenthesis, a reinsurer who has a large claim happen, they say, great, we'll put all the money in the now and invest it, because when it goes through all the lawsuits and all the stuff, it takes years and years and years when the money is needed. 
for direct insurer, first insurer, it's a different story. Um, regulator compliance, that's actually also where you need financial, uh, the, the claim data from a patient's claims by itself. So it's interconnected, a lot of data where it is. And if you go and not do on a blood test, then it goes your personal data somewhere, already on that stage. Pensions. Pensions is another part in it where it is really on risk because pension plans, they have it all. They know when you got born, they know where you did earn your money, they know where you worked on, they know everything about you. And the foundations here in Switzerland, they are very safe in it, um, but there are other countries where they are a little bit looser on, on those kind of data. But if hackers go into the pension plans, they have all your story. And that's a very scary part to think about it. The impact on the pension plans is, uh, is a lot, because uh, if, um, if somebody is st 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 um, stole the data of an employer, and cyber risk is one thing where the employer is the biggest risk party in, in, the, in the data than any other person by itself. And uh, if they go and break into a company, break in the salary scheme, they break into the pension plans. By the way, you can also always interrupt me and ask questions if you have something you would like to go into a little bit deeper parts in it. And we are interconnected with each other. That means if you go into one of the, one of the systems and they interconnect through the world from one part to another part, that's where the risk really is in it. And that's where you carry the data with you. And that's a, uh, that's a very interesting part in it when we know the GDPR, we say, okay, let's protect our personal data. But what, is, what personal data is protected where? We, we have it all on Facebook, that's an easy, easy one, Twitter and all, everything else, where we bring out a lot of us. The photos are there, the um, stories are there, the ages are there, not all the time. People do it not have, don't have it to do it correct because Facebook doesn't ask, ask for correct numbers, so you can put in, in whatever you need. But when it comes to the financial part, then you need your correct data in it. And that's where the interconnection is, is as well. In GDPR, actually, um, that law was there already before as a scheme. But now it's a money law behind it. So if something is, if you find out, if something is not protecting your data, you can sue them. And uh, you can sue them and start to collect different parts. And even if you ensure those kind of data protection, and let me give you an example, which is not on the slide, but I kind of think it's might be an interesting one. And if you then go to, the, um, to protecting your data and to sue them, you have to make it public, and that's where things really are being of interest, and that's where it is. Let me give you an example of a national bank at Blacksbury. National Bank at Blacksbury was hacked in 2016, and what they did, the hacker went inside on a Thursday, and nothing happens, they just went inside. And Friday afternoon, when people went off from work, going to ATM machines, the hackers already were in the ATM machines, looking for all the weekend, for all the personal data, they stole it. And on Monday, when everybody was work, back to work, they closed this, but had all the personal data, and took it away from, um, from all the people, the money. Lost 560,000. The National Bank said, that's great, Everest Insurance will get that paid. They looked at this, paid it a little bit, the bank put some patches in it, eight months ago, 
later the same thing happened, lost 1.8 million. And then the Everest insurance said, no, 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 you, that is not a crime. That is a car protection. So we are not going to do it. The suit is ongoing. So you see how even where the laws, where the GDPR is in place, it doesn't necessarily help you. And it only helps you afterwards when your data is already gone. So preparedness up front is a much better way to think about what can I do not to put my personal data somewhere. If you go on Facebook and say, bye-bye, I'm going on vacation, what do you say? Hey, my house is empty. Go ahead and take, your stuff, take my stuff. So be very careful what you put on, on the data in the social network. We have all these kind of different insurance parts in it, so I skipped that because I already mentioned all that beforehand. Um, and actually, services says actually we need the data, otherwise we can't really do much uh, to work on. So let's take the next step. We need to refine the algorithm. We need to look at different ways of working. That means we have to go to the environment of the clouds of the, our, the people who give us the services to do the actual calculation and say, so here's how we work on it. It's a different type of process starting, but I think it's a good one, it's a very interesting one. Um, we have many more cases also, incidents of security parts in place, a lot you find in the UK. UK is uh, one of the countries that's not really so, so safe about the whole part, maybe they want, that's why they want the Brexit, <laughs> not to be employed by that one. And you can find those stories uh, in the internet and it's a lot of reading stuff is, is a lot of interesting stories about this. The health sector is actually, as I mentioned before, the one which is um, on danger, the highest danger because of the speed for the health part, because of the data and because of the darknet. The price which I mentioned before on the health data on the darknet, on the patient plan is not that much because they can't get so much to you into the foundation of the Stiftung. So some points on the data, on the data journey. So we are doing a lot of data protection. Everybody needs actually a data protection officer. A lot of companies are very low to that one. In Germany, we have another here in Switzerland, another, another year to think about it. But we should already prepare ourselves a little bit. How can we protect the data of the people who trust us, whom we, from each one of the companies, who are dealing with this, this data. And the outlook of the future is actually, and that's also my last slide, because I would like to put some time in it for, for questions and discussions. Um, there are cyber insurance policies around. There are insurers who help all the time with certain kind of things. Insurance companies are, whenever it comes to security, they are the one who putting policies in it. One thing is to make money for them, but also the other things to bring something into society. And one, two last points. We work a lot because of insurance, and we have telematics and GPR because of insurance. And I was one of the person who was doing pay as you drive, which is not drive like a girl, insurance coverages for an insurance company. So I have a couple of few more minutes left for questions and discussions, right? It would be ten minutes. Ten minutes. So. Yeah, my, my question is, um, now I'm, um, I have legal uh, means to, to sue people, but how do, you, do I get to know that um, my data was stolen? I know in GDPR they say you have to inform the people, but will companies really inform everybody and just get a whole mess out of the thing? That's a very, very good question. And uh, in the case which I mentioned from the National Bank, well, they had to because the people noticed their bank accounts were all of a sudden empty. But if nothing happens in between and they don't know it yet, then they might not even inform the people. That's a big, big uh, black 
uh, hole in it or a crystal ball in it where people don't really tell them. If you go to a hospital and a half year later they break into the hospital and they say, oops, these people, mm, do they come back? No, they are from another country. Maybe we don't have to say that. Uh, that's a pretty big question, do they really tell the people? And if they do, can and you sue them, you know, laws go and lawsuits go many, many years afterwards. So that's a, that is a very good question. And uh, I wouldn't be so secure that everybody who has the, our data is really protecting us in the right way. Just out of curiosity, uh, you mentioned uh, that the stolen health data has been sold for uh, big amounts uh, on the black market. What is actually the use of that? So who is uh, yeah, it is sold. It is. It is. The health data is sold, and uh, I mentioned with the price, 300 plus uh, per one person, and they sold it in a portfolio. So you can imagine there are hundred or thousand or ten thousand in it. What the price market is behind it. Um, what they do with this, they look at the data as a portfolio and say, okay, there are so many people now being nearly too sick. Because when you go to hospital, you are not going there because you get your fitting plan. You go there because you, have, you are sick. And then they look at, oh, there's there so many people having cancer. Well, that's a live stream. Okay, maybe I could do something into when they die or when they are even, even not healthy anymore to their um, relevance and say, here is a person sick, you can get that kind of amount on the fund now and you pay later 30% interest. That's how they work. And if you get uh, emails from, oh yeah, I know somebody died and here's, a, here's some kind of uh, money somewhere, ignore those emails. Because they are, these are coming from the dark net. And these are coming whoever, whatever data they have. So they have a very high interest because their data has really value. Uh, if, if I may put an example, yeah, uh, it's an example that predates computers and predates the GDPR, so it's uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, it's someone that's having a lot of phone calls from companies who want to sell something for, to them, and they have so they are so sick about it. They say to one, "I'm sorry, I'm, uh, that person's not here yet. That person has died." And then his family members receive phone calls from funeral homes uh, saying, you, need, you have someone who died in your family, don't you need your services? So, and of course the parents that received that call said, my God, what happened? Yeah. And, but that, that predates computers, so it's interesting to see that even those data are worth a lot, even before it's computing and on 10 and 10 of thousands. Yeah. Of data, uh, like you said, portfolio. Yeah, no, that that that's right. It's a mass of it. Yeah. It's a mass of information that people can access, and uh, there are people also very open to access those kind of information or give those kind of information away. Um, and there are other people who are putting everything inside. Both is probably the the real idea lies in the middle and both is really not correct but um, it is important if the call center calls what you excuse your them because they are reporting these excuses if you tell them I have no interest no time okay that's an unvalid number you hang up and that's it but if you give an excuse oh somebody in my family died they have an information they can use so be very careful about those kind of people approaching. And what is really on our risk today, we can approach on so many, many ways. We can approach by the iPhone, by the computers, um, and um, by emails, by whatever it is. Email is one of the highest risks, by the way. So with communications like Slack, I use that too, um, is much, a much more secured way than emails. And emails and phishing 
uh, that's the highest risk in it, and that's the biggest part where hackers actually go in to use some kind of information and information from companies and companies give that much faster away because some people who work for in a company they are not so responsible for that kind of health data. And one last remark on, uh, on, the, on the data and security uh, before I finish is the people who are the highest risk in an employment situation are those ones who are rotating the jobs a lot for the youngsters. Both because people cannot take their portfolio security numbers and things like this away because they are still in the company. They have access to many, 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 many parts in it. And that is a risk for the companies. And that's where GDPR is actually not enough in it because it's not protected from the outside. Well, I'm very happy outside talking, getting any kind of discussions, mm -hmm. anything you have and would like to discuss further. And I hope that the topic was interesting for you, was not too much leaping into the actual work. And thanks a lot for listening. Thank you very much for the talk. It wasn't a reward quest, but it really was that the core of a great, great problem where informaticians and communicators are becoming more and more bankers, I think and should take as much care of data as they can do of value care, paper and money. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Have shown us that. Uh, in five uh, minutes there will be Alain. There, he will talk about uh, Gutenberg because Bastien uh, was ill this morning. So Alain didn't prepare something, but he knows so much about core and about uh, <laughs> WordPress that it surely will be very interesting. And you have five minutes to change uh, the room if you want to, <laughs> or to yeah. work with Petra. Thank you very Thank much. You.